I'm going to pop a link to an article from Jewel Shockers, which was really useful in making this video because he's basically outlined the Japanese translations of some of the changes. The JoJo's Bizarre Adventure series dates all the way back to 1987, which saw its first manga, Phantom Blood, release. We've subsequently had eight mangas and three animes, as well as a slew of video games. One of those games was JoJo's Bizarre Adventure, the All-Star Battle. If I remember correctly, it was back in 2013 in Japan and then 2014 in Europe and the rest of the world. This iteration has the tagline All-Star Battle R, which is a remaster. A thanks to Bandai Namco for the review copy. We're going to go over the frame rates in the Switch version as well as absolutely everything that I can cram into the video that's fit into the game and a short early review just giving you my thoughts on the experience. If you do enjoy the content then consider sticking around. We just hit 270,000 subs. That's absolutely crazy and we can't thank you enough. All right, JoJo's Bizarre Adventure All-Star Battle R. What is it all about? Well, let's find out. First things first, it costs £44.99 or your regional equivalent. It will require an online subscription if you want to play online and it has a download size of just 3.3 gigs. It's typical pricing for Bandai Namco but it has to be said it includes an incredible amount of content. You're looking at 50 different playable characters from all of the different JoJo arcs. There's a ton of different game modes here and we'll also talk about some of the changes they've made from the original game. And I think for anime fans they're going to appreciate some of those and if you're fans of the original game, you may not appreciate some. So on to performance then, probably the most important aspect. And Glenn really is the fighting game aficionado. And he asked me if it was running at 60 frames per second. As very often, you're timing your moves with the frame rate and high frames facilitate more control. Unfortunately, it's not running at 60, it's running at 30 frames per second. As you can see, this is reasonably consistent. I'd say 95% of the time it's fine. I did notice maybe one or two very minor stutters, but I wasn't actually able to capture those, which was quite annoying. It's kept the visual authentic to Hirohiko Araki's style. And the game uses 3D models within a 3D environment but shifts to a two-dimensional perspective. The character models themselves look incredibly detailed, and upon closer inspection, they have almost a textured surface with a cell-shaded outline. This stylized visual really works nicely to emphasize their manga origins, and it does a lot to differentiate the game from other fighters. The animation work is also very strong, with some ludicrously over-the-top finishing moves. There are a number of different stages to fight in, and these do have some dynamic aspects to them as well, like chandeliers being pulled from the ceiling and because the game's fully 3D you can move towards or away from the camera using a dodge move. The remastered visual carries across to almost every aspect of the title. In almost every regard it's a very strong upgrade. I just wish they'd managed to get it running at 60 frames per second. I'd be surprised if it's not 60 FPS on PC and PS5 but it is a strong one to play in handheld. The colour palette is already off the charts and on the Switch OLED screen man it looks great. When we have the games running side by side although they're not in exactly the same scenes, we really can see the improvements made over the original releases. Now I know that goes without saying, but sometimes hindsight can make you remember things slightly differently to how they were. And all of the characters, from parts 1 to 6, have had their 3D models changed to reflect the new anime. So before we talk about my experiences of the gameplay so far, let's just talk about some of the changes. I've already mentioned that there are 50 playable characters, well originally there were only 40. As you'd expect, the audio has seen big updates. All of the characters from part 1 to 6 have had their voice actors changed to fall in line with the newest anime. I believe that when it first released in 2013, the David Production TV series had started just the year before. That means that all of the characters beyond part 2 had different Sayu than they do now. Another new addition to the gameplay is the new auto combo system. The remaster has an easy beat system for beginners that triggers auto combos by mashing the same button. This is something that you can toggle on though, don't worry it's not there for everyone. And the stamina system from the original game which was despised by some has also been removed. They removed the story and campaign modes after feedback from the fans who basically hated it. Instead here you have a new all-star battle mode. This is split into a number of normal and extra battles and this is probably a good time for me to talk about my experience with the game so far. So I went straight into the all-star battle mode and was initially a little taken aback because I wasn't sure what was going on but it actually works surprisingly well. You have to win three 
three of the different available fights before it unlocks a central boss fight. Now as I mentioned you've got normal battles and extra battles. They all have different conditions to them and what I would class as modifiers but these are related to the game's skill system. If you're familiar with the original there are a number of different characters that have different skills. These might be things like vampirism which gradually increases their health over time. While it's reasonably accessible those extra battles are much more challenging and the combat itself is surprisingly strategic. The blue bar has to be whittled down before you can affect the health unless you perform certain special moves and it will also recharge over time if it's left untouched. To try and improve the flow of the game they've actually increased the game's speed as in literally increased the speed that everyone moves at. They've added in more hit stops as well as more input buffer. Now the one button specials that I mentioned they have to be toggled on but there's a really fleshed out training area so you can practice all of your moves and work out the best combinations. There's a tiered blocking system so when you're standing you'll only block standing attacks and likewise for crouching crouch attacks. The supers that you can perform are scaled to this meter shown in the corner. Depending on how the combat goes you'll gain a ranking as well as some coins. Outside of the all-star battle mode there is a shop but it's not a shop requiring any real money no panic there it allows you to purchase different customizations including background musics 3d models of the different characters and things that fans are genuinely going to enjoy this mode is essentially split into eight different parts, each with the optional fights for progression before you fight the middle boss, which provides an incredibly chunky fighting game experience. It also creates a real focus and gives it quite a bit of replayability. I hopped briefly into the online mode and, well, I couldn't get a game. I wasn't overly enthused about the idea of getting my ass handed to me on a plate, to be honest, so my wait time wasn't that long. I maybe waited a couple of minutes and then gave up. I'm sure they'll populate a little bit more over the coming days. There's also a full arcade mode here, which is a more traditional style affair. There's verses and then there's customize. This essentially allows you, through winning games and purchasing things in the shop, to customize the different things your characters are saying. You can also change their actions, their sound effects, and of course their victory poses. So despite being disappointed that it doesn't run at 60 FPS, it still feels responsive on Switch. Although you're going to need to get yourself a controller that has a decent D-pad on it. Sure, you could try and control the game with an analog stick or the current D-pad, but yeah that's not going to go too well for you. If you're a JoJo fan or a fighting game fan, I think you're going to really enjoy this game. It's just being aware of the potential limitations of that frame rate on the Switch version. If you have any questions about the game, then please do pop them down below and I'll try and answer those. But I don't think you're going to be too disappointed if you pick it up. And you'll be even less disappointed if you save 10% by buying your eShop credit over at switchup.gg and then use code SWITCHUP. Man, that was a nice smooth little segue, wasn't it? <laughs> we obviously get a very little kickback for that, so yeah, be a appreciated. As always, a thanks to all of you that enjoy the channel. 270,000 subs. Amazing. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!